So I, in the last video I was telling you about when I worked at a place that sold computers, I'm not going to say where, um, and how I did a little prank with a CD. Well, before that, I used to do a lot with um, Windows 95 and Windows 98 boot, bootable disks, the floppy disks. You generate them and they basically give you a, a DOS prompt of sorts. And there was very, very little room left on those disks, um, but you were also able to delete I figured out what files I could delete and it would still boot. Um, and I had all of these different DOS tools to play MIDI files and do other things. So I was able to cram as much as I could on one of these disks. And I would create them uh, to, to do stuff to these systems. Basically, I would put them in, reboot the system, and have it install files. And then usually edit back then. Windows had its auto exit batch file, which ran every time the computer started. Uh, so I'd be able to do different things and I would be able to check the date and again put delays on these things Because when you create stuff like that, that's what you do You don't make it run right away. You have it wait for something to happen either a certain number of boots or a certain date and uh, So I would go there to this place that I worked on and off and I did it when I worked there and after I left too, I'd go in there and just mess with these computers just I go in there and one of the things I would do It's like I would have it just the screen would would you know go to black screen and just print messages and play weird music and me and our friends used to sit around and talk about what would be the most annoying thing you could make someone's computer do when it boots like one of the examples was like have it start up and have it lock you know black screen lock the keyboard and it just plays uh, like a MIDI file of it's a small world after all over and over and over again uh, I don't know if I never did that exact one we would do stuff like that um, or uh, I, you know, I figured out the command to print to a printer and one of the display computers was hooked to a printer. So basically I, I set it to every time uh, the computer starts, the auto exit batch file would basically just uh, pipe every single file on the computer to the printer. So it would just start printing up all the gibberish from all the binary files. And, and I would talk to the guys who worked there. They didn't know it was me. They actually thought it was a guy who worked next door that would come over on his lunch break. And they'd be like, oh yeah, that computer for some reason is just printing a bunch of stuff. I think it was that guy, blah, blah, blah. Which is funny because I actually got to know that guy later on. I actually worked with him at a different job. Um, but, but those were fun pranks to play back in the day. Uh, and I just, I just wanted to share those stories. The back in the day, windows was so much fun because there were no, nothing would stop you from, from editing system files. You'd have the auto exit batch file that you just put any command you want in there and run when the computer started as administrator. And, and they, they couldn't even lock a computer cause you would have these screensaver locks for those of you who were around back in the day, for those of you who, who are younger and don't know this back in the day with, with windows, uh, 3.1 and, and 95 and 98, I think up until like uh, ME and XP, you would set your screen to lock and you, you know, you go uh, to these display machines, shake it and the thing bo pop up and say, please enter your password to enter. But that was just a screensaver lock. If you powered off the machine with a power button and turned it back on, it would either log right into the desktop without a password or your password was just for your settings. So when, if you did get a prompt for a user at, at, at this, uh, it, when you turn on the computer, if you just hit enter, it would still boot up the desktop of the default user on the system. It was ridiculous. Um, Windows has definitely gotten better. It's still a piece of crap, but it's, it's definitely gotten better since what it was uh, up until the early 2000s and it was still horrible with Windows XP. Um, so yeah, well, let's get into that. So Windows XP, uh, the, the auto accept batch file was still there, but it didn't really do anything anymore. I still don't completely understand that. I guess it was there for legacy issues. Um, so I no longer could uh, have the auto accept batch file. There's other ways, there's, uh, there's other startup stuff. So a quick and easy thing, rather than just going in and quickly changing the auto accept batch file, which is a lot of times I just do it by hand, just go in there, you know, so the computer talk, just keep rebooting or whatever. Um, the uh, Windows XP, what I would do is you had your startup folder, you know, under program file, startup folder, and whatever you put in there would open or start when the computer started. So I just go in, I highlight the, the Windows folder on the system, drag and drop it into the start folder, and then move the copy bar off the screen, the copy window, because it would take forever to copy. And next time that computer's turned on, it starts opening every single file and executing every single program that you just copied into that folder. So, uh, the pranks back in the day that 
technically you could still do these days. I just don't because I'm an adult that can get in trouble. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Have a great day.